All right, so we're going to be taking a look here at Japanese uh, with E's. Uh, these are the German translations, but they are the same as the English. And this is the most current uh, Japanese, uh, excuse me, uh, French translation, Then it because it is a uh, French company. So we'll come back to that. So initially and currently in English, um, there are three books. Band one, uh, book one, two, and three. And so the first 50 lessons are in band, uh, book one. And for those of you who are interested in learning Japanese, maybe just speaking but not actually learning to write, you can actually get that uh, from these books. Because if you look underneath, uh, you have not only the text in Japanese, but beneath that you have the uh, the Romanized form, which is called the Romaji. Below that, uh, for the first, I believe, 14 to 21 lessons, that is, in this case, this is the German. <laughs> this is Germanized, but uh, for the other one, for the English one, you would get an Anglicized uh, pronunciation to help for the initial, um, you know, until you get the accent and whatnot. And uh, every lesson, for those of you unfamiliar with Asamil, is uh, given in two, is bilingual, right? So you have a, on the right side is, you know, would be English, and on the left is Japanese. And uh, something very nice about the Asamil method for Japanese is that uh, because of the extreme differences in grammar, they actually give you a word-for-word -word, uh, translation below. Uh, they'll use some terminology that's a little specific based on the uh, the particles, the, something that you don't have in English. They're kind of similar to uh, cases or prepositions. Um, every seventh lesson is a... Uh, what's the word in English? Uh, a, re a repetitions le lesson that uh, covers the grammar of the previous seven lessons, or six lessons. Asamil is ideally used for one lesson per day, uh, although it can take longer. The audio for Asamil, by the way, is 100% the language you're trying to learn. So in this case, um, it's 100% Japanese. And that's something that you can actually... is actually very useful even if you're only looking to speak. Because then, um, you know, even if you're not interested in learning to uh, read it, it's very helpful uh, to actually learn the pronunciation. And uh, something really nice about Asamil in general, and uh, as well as for these books, is that the uh, speakers tend to be from, uh, they usually have around four speakers, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, two women, two men, and uh, two one older woman, one younger woman, one older man, one younger man, and from different regions as well, so that you're getting um, a good variety. I know that's like that for the Swedish one. I believe they actually have more speakers for the Swedish one, but you... Uh, you get a different idea of maybe the dialect, the intonation, the intonation, uh, and how it's different from region to region, maybe age group to age group. Um, you know, I was talking to an older Japanese woman, and she was telling me, for example, that uh, a lot there's a lot of difference uh, between vocabulary and uh, speech uh, between the older and younger generation in particular. So sometimes it's really hard to uh, communicate. <laughs> you know, so it's it's kind of interesting. Um, these texts are a little bit older, and we'll come back to that. We're talking about this book here in a minute. Uh, the first 50 lessons are designed in what they call the passive phase. So that's, you're just trying to mostly understand. You're not really trying to do much with that, just understand. And then uh, in the second book, you have the active phase, which is where you're actually trying, you're going to be going back to this book. So you'll, you know, lesson 51, lesson 1, lesson 52, Two, fifty-three, three, and uh, you'll be repeating those lessons and attempting to translate from English into Japanese. In that case, and uh, speaking of that, I think I forgot to mention that at the end of every lesson, which is they're all recorded only Japanese. There's no English on any of the recordings or anything. Uh, you have the where is it exercises. And they usually have about five sentences, and those are for translating into uh, into English. You'll have the translation on the uh, corresponding page, usually, or in the next page. And then uh, there's a sec, and these are on the CD as well. No English, like I said, just pure Japanese. You'll hear renshi, which is uh, exercise or exercises. And then you'll have the second exercise, uh, which is not on the CD, which is like a fill in the blank. Um, 
you know, you'll get the uh, the translation. Uh, let's see, translating to English, this says, uh, this has a, uh, like, teacup is cheap, I'll buy it. It's a very simple sentence, but um, your goal is to then, you know, look in the Japanese, which you will get uh, here, but it's Romanized. But you'll have to use each of these points to figure out, uh, you know, each point or dot or period respond, uh, corresponds to a, uh, a letter. So you'll be able to figure out that, you might be able to use that to figure out, for example, these uh, teacups are cheap, so so these teacups, uh, gosh, I can't think, <laughs> there, there's not really much an English equivalent to wa, but, um, you know, then you'll try to figure out, okay, so it's yasui, and you'll have that over here, and then you're given the, uh, the translation or the answers. So, at the end of the 49th lesson, you get a table, there's hiragana. We have a table right afterwards, or katakana, and then they give you uh, another table in the back here, of the same ones, but they're, uh, gosh, what's the word, right side up? Um, they're not on their sides, so this is, uh, I'm guessing, the more uh, westernized version. Make it easier for Westerners. But um, you also have a little bit of a note space in the back. And then you have the vocabulary. So you can look up based on if you, know, you missed a word and, or you want the more exact translation. You can find that um, in the back. There are a couple of issues uh, with sometimes with the translations because of the difference. You know, uh, based on the context, you know, you might translate something one way here or one way there. So um, that's something to be kind of a little bit careful of. Um, that is one downside with Asamil. I think particularly in the Japanese version, it's still good, it's still recommendable, but it's a little bit of an issue there. And there is an issue particularly, I don't know about the English version, but the German one I have, for example, well, like, same text, so uh, there are some spelling mistakes in Japanese, and you'll you'll notice them, whereas the Romanized, you know, the nice thing, though, is underneath the, uh, the Romaji, the, uh, for your pronunciation and whatnot, which is underneath the, you know, pretty much the entire time, except for the last few lessons, which they, they separate it more, uh, is, will, is usually correctly spelled. I don't, I don't think I've really found that they've uh, misspelled that, but they'll, frequently it seems like they'll take ku, which is this character here, you'll see ku, you know, it'll be written ki underneath, and then, but they'll write ku on top, and it, correctly it would be ki, but they'll, you know, they'll, the best example, for example, that I found is uh, the word iku, which means to go, uh, will be written iku when they meant to write iki. So, you know, it is correct in the uh, the pronunciation area, you know, to look at that. If you look at that, you're fine. Um, so you do have to be careful with that sometimes. And um, with the, the second edition, though, the texts do become increasingly more complicated. They do gradually actually cut out, um, I believe, around when this is lesson 85, or after 85, you'll they'll actually separate. Like I said here, the uh, the transcription. We'll put that towards the bottom, and you'll just get the Japanese. It's still spaced. Uh, actual Japanese is not spaced. There are no spaces between the words, so it just run. It reads on. You know, like Egyptian or Chinese. And the uh, the dial the dialogues. The uh, the exercises will be written the same way. So I see here it's a little more just Japanese. Throughout the lessons, by the way, they do give you what's called furigana, which is the above the characters. You get a pronunciation in Japanese. So like sai, sho. So, you know, if you don't want to read those, that kind of sucks. Uh, you know, once you've kind of learned it, it's, it's better not to have those. But uh, that's what band three is for, or uh, book three. Uh, towards the end, it's the same thing. Um, you have... A, basically a dictionary for the specific dialogue used in the books. I believe these are, you know, it tells you which, uh, the back, which, uh, repetitions, like, uh, wait, what do you call that? Every seventh lesson, uh, what the themes of it are, you know, back from the first book all the way up to this one. So that's the current model, or this is the current form of the book in English. It's two books. Currently in Japanese, uh, they've cut out the 99th lesson of book 
two, so you have 98. Every seventh lesson actually has a text now, a uh, repetitions uh, dialogue is what they call it, but it's not really a dialogue, it's more of a... Um, it, it's a repetition of the pre, like more grammatical structures and things like that from the previous uh, six lessons usually. And sometimes it kind of is coherent and seems to be a dialogue-ish, um, or dialogue-ish, but um, other than that, it is uh, not, not really much of a dialogue. Uh, so you do get that. That is so that's new, and that has a different set of speakers. Uh, many of the texts are actually updated and modernized. The book is, uh, I believe, a little bit smaller. Look here. Well, I don't believe that it is. You know, as you can see here, this is the new one, old ones. So you lose one lesson, you gain uh, what fourteen new, you know, ten sentence dialogues, and uh, many of the texts are updated. So here it's a little bit prettier in this book, a little bit newer. So you still have the uh, dialogue, dialogue, the uh, the vocabulary in the back. And uh, some grammatical points. Let's see. So that's the newest one. Uh, if you're going to get this, I, I don't know if this is available, if it's going to be available in English. I think it will be, because that Asimov does tend to update these things. Um, you know, that's his, the, the Chinese one, for example, it was two, is two books right now outside of... Uh, believe France, where there's one book. I don't know if it's a completely different book or if it's updated, um, but they've done this a lot. They'll make new, newer editions and they'll, you know, put them into one volume. So that is nice. It's one book to carry. And uh, for those who are interested in learning the, uh, the characters, this book is also available in English. So, see here, you'll, it'll start, uh, it's actually organized based on the lessons in which the characters appear. And so you can learn them progressively with the uh, with the lessons. So you can find one of the numbers. Here we go. So you see our 17 is written right here. That means it's from the 17th lesson. And they're marked with other numbers. You're given the stroke orders. Uh, how did, you know, not numbered, but in the order that appears for some left. So you go... So you get the idea. So that's about a thousand different characters. That's what you're given. Uh, so they explain, you know, how to look these up. They give you a few, you know, a few ways to look these up. Back here, how many stri uh, strokes are used? A uh, stroke order is very important in Japanese, so it's something to keep in mind. And uh, something really, really nice about this is that you get all of the dialogues written in uh, actual Japanese, the same style, no spaces, from top to bottom, right to left. And uh, they're, so they're very short, you can actually see here, when the highlighted part here means that it's the beginning of the dialogue, until you hit the next, you go from here to here, so this is the next dialogue, then from here, oh, <laughs> so from here to here, then this is the next dialogue, from here to here, and then stops here, it's the next dialogue. So, you know, you can read along with this. That's actually what I do uh, with the CDs. And uh, the only downside is that the, uh, the exercises are not uh, in this. So this does not include the exercises, just the texts. But you get all 99 or I guess 98 with the new French one. So, yeah, that's awesome, Mill. I'd highly recommend it. If you're looking at getting the newest one, I don't know when that's going to be available in English. But if that one comes out, I'd probably recommend getting this. You, the only difference is you're not going to get the 99th lesson, which kind of sucks, but um, that's not a particularly big deal. So, it's awesome mill, Japanese with ease.